I thought they said that this war was coming to an end. It seems those guys didn't receive the memo. I think we better leave this place now. Remember that we are fighting on opposing sides but since we got stranded here together, we decided to help each other out of this desert. Yes, let's find refuge in a nearby village. Once we cross the swamp at the border and enter Mesa Marrakesh, we'll be safe. I feel sorry for the civilians who are caught in this war. They don't realize that the people they voted into power are exploiting them and the rebels started this war to prevent the exploitation of natural resources. Yes, we were forced to fight against our will. Let's escape to Mesa Marrakesh. No one will find us there. Since they left us in the desert, they'll assume we didn't make it out of the desert alive. Meanwhile, we can start afresh in Mesa Marrakesh. Yes, let's get out of here. We'll need to change into civilian clothes. I am sure we'll be able to get civilian clothes from someone along the way. Yes, let's go. Never again will I allow myself to be caught up in a war that benefits the bourgeoisie at the expense of the masses. Let's go before they find us here and throw us in jail for befriending the enemy. Since, in essence, we are supposed to be enemies yet I have absolutely nothing against you. Yes, let's go. We'll bring our families to Mesa Marrakesh once the war is officially over. Yes. In a bustling marketplace in the heart of a war-torn village, people hurriedly go about their business, casting anxious glances at the sky as distant explosions echo in the distance. The explosions are getting louder. We better rush back home. I think we'll leave this hidden marketplace early today. Yes, let's go. I don't know how much more of this we can take. Many people have left the village, they've moved to refugee camps in neighboring countries. I think my family should consider leaving as well before it's too late. Yes, there's so much lawlessness now because of this war. Everyone seems to do as they please, it's crazy. Let's leave this place now. In a humble cottage on the outskirts of the village, we meet Zora, also known as Sarah, a bright-eyed girl with a heart full of dreams, and Abina, her spirited cousin. They play with handmade dolls, their laughter echoing through the room. In a world torn apart by conflict, two young girls will embark on a journey that will forever change their lives. Do you think the war will ever end, Abina? I don't know, Zura. But as long as we have each other, we'll be okay. Yes, as long as mum and dad are with me and you have your parents, we'll be okay. Grown-ups always protect children. Right. Yes. Last night, I overheard my mum and dad talking. They said that we'll all be seeking refuge at a nearby village. And your parents have decided to seek asylum at a neighboring country. They'll be staying at a camp hence. You might be staying in our house until they sort out the papers. Your dad lost his job, the house, he lost everything in the war hence, he wants to start afresh in a new country. What? So mum and dad want to leave me with your parents? You're my cousin and I love you but I'd rather stay with my parents. I don't want to separate from them. Your mother travels a lot to source goods to sell hence, we'll be left with your dad, Uncle Kwaku, most of the time. How will he take care of us since he's always mending people's shoes in your backyard? I don't know. The auntie who helps out in our house, whenever mum is away, left. She went to her village to deliver her baby. They say she's carrying dad's child but I don't want to believe that. What, does your mum know? Yes and she keeps threatening to leave dad. I better warn you in advance, my parents fight a lot. I don't know why they're still married. They don't realize how much their fights affect my little brother and I. I am sorry to hear that cousin. Someone's coming. Little did they know, their innocence would soon be shattered by a betrayal that would test their faith to the core. Girls, listen to me carefully. We need to leave. Leave? But where will we go, Papa? Zura, my child, as you're aware, I lost everything in the war and your mother and I have decided to leave you with family members. We'll come and get you as soon as we find alternative decent accommodation. We don't want to take you to mass temporary camps fearing that strangers might hurt you. What about Mama? She's queuing at the camp. I will be joining her soon. There's no time to explain. Pack your things quickly. We must go to your aunt's house. Your uncle Kwaku and your aunt Nadia, 
Abina's parents, found a safe place for you all to stay in a village near the border. We'll fetch you from there as soon as we sort out our papers. Hurry, girls, we have to leave before it's too late. Just as they're about to depart, the door bursts open, revealing Uncle Kwaku, a sinister figure with malice in his eyes. Leaving so soon, brother. How disappointing. I will take the girls to the neighboring village. Everyone will be safe there. Hurry up, children. But Dad, what about Mama? Is she coming with us? Your mother has already left with your little brother, Obina. We'll join them as soon as we can. With a cruel smirk, Uncle Quake lunges forward, grabbing Zura and Abina by the arms. The girls cry out in terror as he drags them away, leaving Zura's father helpless in his wake. A few hours later... Girls, wait here. We need to get some food. I am sure there's no food where we are going. I will grab what I can from the illegal market that's hidden in this forest. What? You want to steal from the poor vendor's father? You're not going to tell me what is right or wrong. Both of you should stay here. Don't move. That's wrong. It's not done. That's my dad for you. My dad would never do such a thing. He believes in hard work and in treating others fairly. I hope my parents sort out their asylum papers and come back to fetch me soon. Give me that sack of grains and those potatoes. You don't need it as much as I do. If you don't want me to report you to the police, you will do as I say. No, mister. Please, I need some of that to feed my family. You can purchase food just like everyone else here. What you are doing here is illegal. I will tell the authorities that you feed and shelter rebels here. Kwaku grabs the food from the vendor. Your family can fend for themselves. This is mine now. Thief, somebody help me. Don't you dare come near me. Do you think I came here alone? Who else is brave enough to rob you like this? It's obvious that I have backup. You don't know how many police officers will come here if any of you dare to touch me. Also, I may be carrying a weapon. So back off. Mister, that's not right. He better not try to steal from us. I know that guy. His name is Kwaku. He's from a neighboring village. He only steals from women or people that he considers to be weak. He won't dare steal from us. He better not steal from us, or else. Just ignore him. He will leave some of the grains and potatoes behind because he can't travel very far carrying a heavy load. We are helpless because if we leave our vegetable stalls to help a Joa, someone else or even one of the other vendors will steal from us. Also, we don't know who's waiting outside for this man. Yes, what if it's the rebels or even the police? Business is risky. A Joa will have to live with her losses. She'll be fine in a few days. I hope this war ends soon so that we can all lead normal lives and run our businesses in the open. Food is scarce now hence, these illegal markets have sprouted in unlikely places. What did you say? Nothing. We were just, just saying, ah, the food, it's scarce for all of us. Scarcity is for the weak. I'll take what I want, when I want. And none of you will stop me. I better leave this place. I hope the girls are safe. Listen, I will only take part of the grains and potatoes. My family is starving. This war destroyed our fields and I had to close down my business as a cobbler. Woman, I desperately need this food. I hope things will get better at my destination which is far away from here. I don't have any money to pay for the goods. We are all struggling to make ends meet. You have no right to steal from me. If you dare to steal from me, you will regret it one day. Just leave and pretend this never happened. No, you leave me with no choice but to take the food by force. Months later. Inside the makeshift home where Abina and Zur are staying with Kwaku, tensions run high as the uncertainty of Zur's parents' fate weighs heavily on their minds. Abina's mother, Nadia, had traveled to the city to buy and sell goods as usual. Zura, you need to face the truth. It's been months since we last heard from your parents. They're not coming back. No, Abina, you're wrong. Mama and Papa are strong. They wouldn't just disappear like this. They're out there somewhere. They'll never abandon me. You're living in denial, Zura. Face it, your parents are probably in heaven by now. 
You don't understand, Abina. Mama and Papa would never abandon me. We have to keep believing that they're alive. Enough of this foolishness. Your parents are gone, Zura. Accept it and move on. You're under my roof now, and you'll do as I say. I'll never stop believing in them, Uncle Kwaku. No matter what you say. Whatever. A few weeks later. Zura, I have been looking all over the place for you. Why are you crying? It's your father, he. You too. I think it's time we reported him to mum. He won't deny hurting us. I was afraid to report him but enough is enough. Yes. A few days later, Jackie Ann and Kruma, Zura's parents, arrive in the middle of the night and unannounced at Quaku's place. What? So, the what the girls reported to the pastor was true. The church searched for us and directed us to this hut. Kwaku, what have you done? We will not disclose the unspeakable acts committed by Kwaku, but what he did was undeniably heinous, a criminal offense that left scars both physical and emotional on the innocent girls. Nkrumah, call the police now. I can't believe what's going on here. Zura, my child, and Abena, are you all right? I, I can explain. We trusted you to take care of them, not to hurt them. As the gravity of the situation sinks in, Jackie reaches for her phone, dialing the emergency number as she speaks. I'm calling the police. You'll pay for what you've done, Kwaku. Minutes later, the sound of sirens fills the air as police cars pull up outside. Uncle Kwam is handcuffed and led away, his protests falling on deaf ears. <coughs> Kwaku Biggie Asandi, you're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. And so, justice is served as Uncle Kwaku faces the consequences of his actions. But for Azura and Abina, the road to healing has only just begun. The next day, Jackie takes the girls to a local church to see the pastor. Remember, girls, God is with you through every trial and tribulation. Lean on him for strength, and he will guide you through this dark time. Mrs. Nadia Asante, you'll be pleased to know that both of the girls' test results came out clean. The girls will fully recover physically in a few weeks however, the emotional scars may take years to heal. What do you think Jackie? Thank you doctor. We thank God that the girls are in good health. I took the girls to the pastor yesterday after their checkups. I think they need counseling from a qualified counselor, and genuine men are women of God. Indeed, Mrs. Jackie Asante, I completely understand your perspective. Yet, seeking assistance from the hospital psychologists and counselors may prove costly, especially considering your current struggle with your daughter's medical bills. In light of this, I recommend taking the girls to the church promptly and revisiting the clinic once you've secured the necessary funds for counseling. Yes, thank you doctor. I'm planning to move to the city with my two children. Abena will have access to the counseling she requires there. Once I ensure that man, who will soon be my ex-husband, Kwaku, is held accountable for his actions, my children and I will depart for the city. Brilliant. I will give you both referral letters. Remember to prioritize the girl's well-being. This one horrific incident that occurred to both girls at the same time would change the trajectory of each girl's life. Zura, my child, I can see the pain etched on your face, and it's understandable given what has happened. Your uncle's actions are deplorable, and the hurt inflicted upon you and Abena is immense. But let us turn to the wisdom of the scriptures for guidance in times like these. Yes, Zura, forgiveness is a powerful act, but it doesn't mean we condone or forget the wrongs done to us. Your uncle must face the consequences of his actions, but holding on to anger and resentment will only burden your heart further. But mother, why did God allow such evil to happen to us? My dear, there are many factors at play, 
and sometimes we find ourselves in situations beyond our control. War, poverty, the decisions we've made, they all contribute to the trials we face. But remember, God works all things together for the good of those who love him. Mother, because of what Uncle Kwaku did to me, I now feel like everyone sees me differently. My self-esteem has taken a hit. I feel broken, Mother. My dear, your worth is not defined by external circumstances, experiences, or your own perception of success or failure. It's defined by who God says you are. You are blessed, a part of a royal priesthood, and destined for greatness. All of God's promises are within your reach if you have faith, obey Him, and trust in Him. If you open your heart to Him, surrender your pain and doubts, He will turn this situation around for your benefit. Trust in Him, my dear. Yes, Mother, thank you. Indeed, Zura, the story of Christ's sacrifice reminds us that even in the face of unspeakable suffering, there is hope. We must trust in God's plan, even when we cannot see the full picture. You stand at a crossroad now, Zura. The choices you make will shape your future. But know this, God's love and grace are boundless. Surrender yourself to Him completely, and He will guide you through this darkness. Let us pray, seeking God's strength and guidance in the midst of this storm. He will never forsake us, even in our darkest hour. Heavenly Father, in the midst of pain and confusion, we come before you seeking solace and strength. Our hearts are heavy with the weight of injustice and hurt, yet we know that you are a God of compassion and mercy. We lift up Zura and her family to you, Lord. Surround them with your comforting presence and grant them the courage to face the challenges before them. Help them to find healing for their wounds and peace for their troubled spirits. We pray for Zura's uncle, that he may come to repentance and seek redemption for his actions. May your justice be swift and your mercy abundant, guiding him onto the path of righteousness. Grant us the wisdom to forgive as you have forgiven us, Lord. Teach us to release the burden of anger and resentment, and to embrace the freedom found in your grace. As we navigate through this darkness, may your light illuminate our path and lead us to a place of healing and restoration. Give us the strength to trust in your plan, knowing that you are working all things together for our good. In your holy name we pray, Amen. 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 Meanwhile, back at Nadia and Abena's cottage. Abena, listen to me carefully. Your father, Kwaku, is a despicable man who deserves nothing but contempt. He has brought shame upon our family with his actions, and he must pay the price for what he's done. But mom, um, Jackie said we should forgive him and let God handle it. Forget what Jackie said, she's weak, just like your father. In my opinion, forgiveness gives more power to the perpetrator. They hurt others and think they'll get away with it. Not on my watch, we cannot let him get away with what he's done. You must seek revenge, Abena. Make sure he suffers for every tear he's caused you to shed. But mom, won't that make me just like him? No, my dear, it will make you strong. You must protect yourself from men like him in the future. Trust no one, Abena. And never, ever forgive him. But what about love and forgiveness? Love and forgiveness are just fairy tales, Abena. In this world, it's every man for himself. You must be strong, like me, and never let anyone hurt you again. Okay, mom, I'll do what you say. That's my girl. Now, let's make sure your father pays for what he's done. Disclaimer, please note that the scripts of this series, and all past and future movies or films on this channel, provides a fictionalized dialogue that is inspired by true events. The content has been adapted for dramatic purposes, and we have made some changes to the script and characters while staying true to the essence of the original story. Hence, any similarities to persons living or dead, or actual events is purely coincidental. Thank you for watching this episode of Crossroads Odyssey. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, we encourage you to do so now. Subscribing ensures you'll be notified whenever we release new content. Additionally, we'd be grateful if you could like and share our videos. Your support is invaluable to us. As the events unfold in the lives of Zura, Abina, and their families, 
we are reminded of the complexities of human nature and the harsh realities of the world we live in. It is a tale of innocence shattered by cruelty, of trust betrayed by those closest to us. Through the darkness, however, there emerges a beacon of hope, the courage of Zura and Abina to speak out against the injustices inflicted upon them, and the swift action taken by their parents to confront the evil that lurked in their midst. Their bravery serves as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. Yet, in the aftermath of such trauma, there are diverging paths laid before them. On one hand, we witness the gentle guidance of Jackie, Zura's mother, who, rooted in her faith, advocates for forgiveness and healing. She understands the weight of the pain endured by her daughter and Abina, and urges them to find solace in the grace of God, while leaving justice in his hands. Conversely, we see the venomous words of Nadia, Abina's mother, poisoned by bitterness and vindictiveness. Her counsel of vengeance and distrust only serves to perpetuate the cycle of hurt and despair, leading her daughter down a path of bitterness and resentment. In the end, the lessons learned from this tale are profound and poignant. We are reminded of the power of forgiveness to heal even the deepest wounds, and the importance of trusting in a higher purpose beyond our understanding. And above all, we are reminded that in the face of darkness, it is love, compassion, and faith that will ultimately light our way forward. Before we conclude, we would like to share the following verses with you. Kindly note that the verses were taken from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Deuteronomy 31, 6 says, Be strong and of a good courage, fear not, nor be afraid of them, for the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. 2 Corinthians 12, 9-10 says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then am I strong. If a science 432 says, And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. James 5.16 says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Matthew 22 39 says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Colossians 3 12 to 14 says, Put on therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and be not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee, be not dismayed. For I am thy God, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And Psalm 147, 3 says, He healeth the broken in heart, and bindeth up their wounds. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to the end of this episode, we lift up our hearts to you in prayer. We thank you for the lessons learned and the truths revealed through the experiences of those we have followed in this story. Grant us, O Lord the strength to forgive those who have wronged us, knowing that forgiveness is not only an act of obedience, but also a pathway to healing and freedom. Help us to trust in your sovereign plan, even when circumstances seem dire, knowing that you are always working for our good. Fill our hearts with love and compassion, that we may extend grace to others as you have extended it to us. May we be beacons of your light in a world darkened by sin and suffering. 
bringing hope and restoration to those in need. Guide us, O Lord, as we navigate the challenges of life, knowing that you are always with us, leading us along the paths of righteousness. Help us to walk in faith, trusting in your promises and relying on your strength. In your mercy, hear our prayer and grant us your peace. Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.